The heroes stand with readied weapons and underwater survival gear at the entrance to the Dark Lake's cave, the den and realm of the evil deceiver Mimic Chameleon, into which a good portion of the king's most precious treasure chest has been emptied. The task ahead seems well within reach of a team of their ability and powers. Go in, collect an assigned portion of the treasure and bring it back out. That was all that was asked of them. How hard could it be? Well, they had been warned that the Mimic's Dark Lake was a place of evil, filled with monsters that would feed on one's mind a place of illusions that would envelop you and your willpower. Yet, what illusion could harm a true hero? <laughs> the team entered the cave, fully geared up and seemingly ready. This is my home, and I must stand and fight for it. The warrior was holding the line and half afraid of agony and death, but also encouraged by the memories of his home and family. The bright green fields and the chirping of birds and the lush lips of his beautiful wife, all were present in his mind as he held the line with his countrymen. The memories of his son and his daughter were as beacons for when his strength seemed to be stumbling and wavering in the depths of his soul. The enemy attacked violently, and they would probably not hold. Why would such a fate await those as pure as his kin? Wake up, brother! As the hero shook the other squadmate, attempting to awaken him, a wordless sensation started seeping into the drowned mind of his mission companion. The sensation was one of doubt, not born of cowardice, but of something deeper and, at the same time, higher. It would be overwhelming were it not his determination to hold the line against the enemy of his homeland, of his family, of his people. In his determination, he cast over himself the decision that the more he would be attacked by the nefarious sense of doubt, calling out to something within him, at such a dread hour, the stronger he would block the enemy's blows with his resilient shield arm. The hero, seeing his fallen companion more and more solidified in the depths of the mimic's dark lake, wisely decided to leave and bring out with him the portion of the king's treasure he had found. This would help his fellow heroes far more than any of his attempts to wake them up. So he left. Coming out alone from the insidious cave, he reported back to the king with his small pouch of treasure. He was welcomed with open arms. What have you found, my son? Merely this pouch, the portion as requested my father. The father smiled and laughed in a loving manner. What pouch? The hero looked at the hand that was holding the treasure pouch, and there was nothing there but a bright, bright light, the brightest. Then he remembered. They had survived that day, but the enemy would return, as it always does. His muscles were cramped with the strain, and his heart disheartened. The enemy would always return. Then a tick bit his leg, and the strange numb tickle sensation it produced brought him an instant of clarity. The actual enemy wasn't the army he had just fought off on the battlefield. The real enemy was where it has always been. In his homeland and in the enemy's nation. In the soil that grew his crops and fed his game. In the air that he breathed into his lungs. In the water he collected from the creek and the rain. 
The enemy was everywhere. He saw it then, clearly. And as he saw it, the mimic chameleon exploded out of the tick that was biting his leg and towered over the warrior, staring at him menacingly with those scaly eyes. The warrior felt fear at first, and as the feeling moved around him, the mimic grew larger and more menacing. Perceiving that a strategy would have to be used to stop feeding his actual enemy, his mind then sought a different focus, a different emotion. None worked, as the mimic chameleon gained in power and strength before his soul. The bright green fields and the chirping of birds and the lush lips of his beautiful wife, all the pleasant feelings they brought would also feed the monster before him. <sighs> the warrior curled into a fetal position and cried in despair. You see now, my beloved son, you remember. I, I do, father. I was the treasure you asked me to collect, to rescue. I saved it, the treasure, from the dark lake of the mimic. Yes, you saved yourself because you are and always were the hero, even if you had been drowned in the waters of death. Life and truth can never be changed, can never be extinguished. Time is the mimic's curse and your blessing, because time is the predominant quality of that which is dead. Yes, Father. He the enemy of life is always racing against time, even though he is eternal. He is eternal, my son, but he is not timeless as life and truth. He only exists where time is and, therefore, where death lingers. His father embraced him, lovingly and whispered, There is no other treasure but life and truth which are the same. From amidst his tears, whose water blurred his vision and whose salt burned his wounds, the warrior was struck with a sudden, instant realization. The sudden change brought him back to his feet as his mouth now drew a smile. All fear subsided due to the inner realization, this knowing, of who he truly was, and that that reality was but the waters of illusion and death, surrounding a ray of truth and life. As fear in all its qualities and tonalities left him, the warrior would now contemplate the bright green fields and the chirping of birds and the lush lips of his beautiful wife, and none of these memories would hook him back. He loved them because now he could, as he had let go of his garment of death. He loved them now because that is all he, the living, can do. Fear left because he did not love the illusion anymore. But what it tried to imitate, the true bright fields and the living birds and the loving wife. In an instant, the mimic chameleon who had waned and whose stare had lost its menace vanished, and in its place stood a familiar smile. The hero had been successful, and his wife, she had been rescued back to the living, too. Whether this reality has been, in our personal, individual memories, a brutal place or a pleasant one, or even neither and just the bored slothfulness in between, we, those who seek answers in the little niches, such as this irrelevant channel where this your fellow student pours his notes into, we are all heroes. We stood courageously in the face of fear and gazed beyond the vapors that surround us like ghosts. 
we dare to seek ourselves and allow each other to point to where we would otherwise never look. We dare to allow ourselves to be found, because that is always ever what we truly find, that which had been seeking us, truth, life, our home. And as we all know, it is of no use to shake and force one into awakening to the reality of our condition. Doing so merely reinforces it. As much as it is difficult to do, we must be ready to leave behind those of our kin who refuse or are unable to see and know. For leaving them behind is the only way they will be able to see and know elsewhere, drowned in the waters of illusion. Because time, always remember, my fellow kin, is the curse of the dead and the blessing of the living. Time chips away at the illusion as it races to hold together against its eternal decay of death, its putrid stench, its fleeting beauty. The illusion inhabits our perception and feeds on our identification with it and the inescapable fear it carries. All around us is but mist and shadows. The light that gives these shadows form and movement is our own, our life, our truth, the treasure we were sent to collect. We are the saved and the savior, the found and the finder. We can and will assist each other along our journey as we hold the line where, with our shield arms against the enemy that always returns, because it is the tick that inhabits the core of reality, biting at our leg even in the corners of the illusion where we call home. Yet we will never carry each other exactly because we are individual living. Only we can choose. The enemy cannot choose for us, merely frame the illusory options and present them to us. Only the living have the power of individual choice. The collective reality is always a result of individual choice multiplied. And make no mistake, the world, the realm itself, is the enemy, who recruits and even breeds minions. All this enemy can do is amplify the choices they desire and muffle the ones they have to avoid to survive. And yet, they are always there, the choices, just waiting to find us. Yes, these little us here made up of the realm stuff. There is nothing true that we realize that wasn't looking for and found us. Because we, not these bodies that decay, not these minds that are subject to perception, but our life, we are the treasure of the king submerged in the lake of death and time. The lake is eternal. It lasts as long as time exists. Life, however, being truth, is timeless, independent and immutable. It needs only a hero. Will it find you?